Let me move on. The Nigerian president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has moved for the establishment of two new economic advisory teams. The first was the Presidential Economic Coordination Council to be headed by the president himself, and the second was the Economic Management Team Emergency Tax Force to be headed by the Minister of Finance. Joining me from our Abuja studios to discuss this is a Rice News political editor, Somna Sambo. Sambo is my go-to inside man whenever I need to find a political compass for Nigeria's economic journey in the wilderness. A good evening to you, my friend. Good to have you on Arise Exchange. Thank you so much, Bosin, and good evening to our viewers. Thank you very much, Sam. Uh, Somna, let me walk this you. Let me get you to walk me through it. Give me your first word on the two newly announced economic advisory and emergency committees that President Tinubu's government announced yesterday. I'd like to start by saying that it looks like uh, President Bola Tinubu is uh, uh, learning the ropes very fast, uh, having been his first experience as president of Nigeria. And uh, uh, it surprises me that he's doing much better in this field than uh, former President uh, Muhammadu Buhari, who had had a uh, career once as a military head of state, then before becoming uh, a civilian head of state. I'm saying this in the instance of uh, how the Nigerian economy has has continued to face turbulence over the years uh, since independence. And of course, the interventions that we've had previously uh, by several governments. Now, if we take a look at uh, some of the decisions reached by President Chinubu, uh, especially with the uh, establishment of these two new bodies, the Presidential Economic uh, Coordinating uh, Council, and then, of course, you also have the economic uh, management team, uh, emergency team, the EET, uh, and then you now juxtapose it with the economic management team that he has set up sometime in October last year. You see that there's a deliberate attempt for him to actually stand out of the crowd. And what's the difference here? Now, previously, what we used to have is economic management teams that are uh, made up of both those in the public and private sectors. And of course, it will have been previously difficult for you to be able to build a very strong and viral economy when you have private sector players directly inside an economic management team. But in this instance, there's a sieving here. So what the president has done from what I can uh, deduce from his action is actually to put one uh, uh, council, that is the coordinating council, uh, the presidential economic coordinating council that's made up of both the public and private sector players in one whole large body chaired by him. And then, of course, you have the vice president and others. And of course, you have uh, top business players like Aliku Dangote, Tony Elumelu, and all of that right in there. And then there's also the economic management team's uh, emergency uh, team that he has put in place, the EET, which is an offshoot of the economic management team that he put in place that's chaired uh, by Wale Edun, the Minister of uh, uh, Finance and Coordinating Minister for the Economy. Now, this uh, emergency team is supposed to actually just help produce some blueprints and all of that to guide uh, the council as to what to do uh, as we just go on now. And one of the first tasks is for it to have a, a six month blueprint as to how to coordinate the economy. Uh, and uh, the key thing here, Bosin, is yes. that in the past, you would have private sector players in an economic management team and in such a way that when you want to make policy shifts or announcement, I mean, these are business people who are out there to make profits and all of that. They already know the government's in intent. And uh, just like Professor Akman Ekbo of the University of Calabar had said in one of his articles that he had written, there will be no element of surprise <clears throat> because they are all out there for profit. And once they get a hint as to the direction of government, they quickly adjust. And so when you bring the policies, they don't work very uh, well. But this time around, the economic management team is still populated by public sector players, and then, of course, with a mix of a few advisors here and there. And then, uh, when you come to the coordinating council, then you will see a convergence of all players. So I think these lessons are being learned from the past, and you will see that this model uh, was actually adopted by. Uh, former military head of state, uh, General Sani Abacha, when he allowed critical players uh, uh, to actually make decisions for him, 
And you could see that they ran that economy very, very well compared to how we've been able to have subsequent ones. Now, former President Olusegun Obasanjo tried that too when he brought the likes of Okonjo Iwala and all of that, and he formed his economic management team, the void of politicians, but there were some still uh, a mix of politicians. So if we're able to have this mm, council yes. where politicians are not so much populated, mm. and then of course, you don't have so much private players determining how government should bring up policies that will prevent the economy, there's a uh, so, tendency uh, but, that the economy may be on its way to recovery. Uh, as, as I was just wondering, because this is the Tinubu's administration that campaigned to Nigerians <clears throat> with the, the poster that says, look, we, we know it all. We, we have the agenda at our fingertips. We have an economic plan. We know the problems. We've got the solutions. And it got the vote. And then today, we haven't really seen that economic agenda of the administration in manner of speaking. Uh, if you have it, I would like to see it. So the, the administration is now setting up committees and councils to help it draw up economic program. I, I'm not trying to find that. Do you think this administration really came prepared they said they hit the ground running. That's what was said on the campaign trail. Does that look like that to you at the moment? Well, President Bola Tinubu's team didn't really come prepared because if we would have read um, uh, uh, an interview granted by Bayo Nanuga, uh, presidential media advisor on strategy, uh, quite a few days ago on Business Day newspaper, you would have seen where he said that President Tinubu didn't really know that there was so much rot in government and then challenges in government like this. But of course, there are no room for excuses uh, because he's already there. And of course, Nigerians are looking up to him to be able to drive the economy into uh, 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 not just uh, 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 into a, a, a situation of us regaining our momentum, but of course also driving the economy into prosperity in a sustainable manner. Now, there were lots of promises that were made uh, based on what he had thought the Buhari administration had done. But even if there are challenges here and there, the reality is that the president needs to wake up and ensure that some of the teething challenges that his government has had in the past eight to nine months are fixed. Because, I mean, just by May, <laughs> we will be one year. And so you would have seen that these co co uh, committees and council are, are being put in place. But I would advise that some of these committees should not be be depended upon fully. Because if you have several multiple committees working here and there, there's a tendency that they'll be having an uh, overlapping functions. While it is uh, clear that the president is trying to assign responsibilities to different committees, uh, nonetheless, he should uh, be focused as to what exactly he wants. And when I say being focused, I mean looking for internal solutions to our problems. Because I'm seeing that they are uh, sort of running to the Bretton Woods institutions for some solutions. You would have been seeing IMF and the World Bank uh, coming into the country and playing critical role in the, in the few uh, in the past few months, uh, President Tunubu should be very careful alongside the Minister of uh, finan Finance. Though I know that. Uh, well, I don't had worked with the World Bank, and uh, there's a tendency, uh, I mean, having served with some of those institutions, uh, to want to get some advice. But nonetheless, uh, some of these Bretton Woods institutions' advice need to be uh, uh, taken uh, uh, cautiously. Because if you look at, for example, uh, what we had had uh, during the uh, Abacha uh, government that I just made reference to, you will see that there was a clear decision by that government in terms of economics to so leave it in the hands of Nigeria experts who will be able to fashion out homemade solutions and policies. And you would have seen that former Minister of uh, Finance, then Anthony Ani, actually was given a free hand. So President Tinubu should give uh, Wale Edo free hand to be able to coordinate like we've seen an attempt. Uh, uh, so when he's given the free hand, then he's able to gather experts who have a very good understanding of our terrain and know how we depend more on a, 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 a sort of um, one major revenue earner, that's oil. Um, oil. And then from there, we'll now uh, the focus from that oil and grow certain aspects of the economy that could help take us away from uh, the sort of economy that we're running now. Now, uh, if you look at it critically, yes. what 
is the clear thinking about the issue of currency. Well, we've seen some form of stability in the past few days, uh, but I can tell you that the CBN, through the Monetary Policy Committee, needs to think inwardly and think in such a way that uh, private businesses could be given some uh, uh, you know, boost. Uh, because if you look at the interest rate, a lot of people have been complaining that they are not so satisfied with what the Monetary Policy Committee has been bringing out. But I can tell you that if they work together in terms of monetary policies and get uh, that aspect very well, I can tell you we will even gain more in terms of the Naira, and then people will have more access to li liquidity, and then of course there will be job creation, because some of the jobs promised by President Chinbu cannot come from the public sector alone. So, but then what do we do? What we need to do is not to leave the entire thing to the private sector, but for the government to put up a very good machinery that can liaise with the private sector to deliver so, the required jobs. Okay, so, so, so Sumner, the, 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 the president has a presidential advisory council uh, parading some of the best private sector brains in Nigeria. Dr. Doyin Salami, who was in the president uh, Buhari's uh, presidential advisory committee, uh, is back uh, in the Tinubu's uh, new uh, council, as well as Mr. Bas Bismarck Rwani, some of the best economic eggheads in Nigerian financial markets experts as well. So do you think this new team or this fire brigade advisory council will make a difference this time around? Yes, uh, someone like Professor Doyin Salami, I mean, he, you would have seen that there was a deliberate attempt by that economic management team under Buhari to actually make things work. But of course, uh, there were lots of uh, politicians within that um, uh, era that I uh, didn't really give them a, a lot of time to breathe. So uh, since... Uh, uh, President Tinubu is more private sector centered. I think he should allow the likes of uh, uh, Bismarck Rouhani and Professor Doyin Salami to be able to uh, sell those ideas that uh, they had really wanted President, former President Buhari to implement. He should actually call them into you know, uh, a closed door session and have a word with them because some of those uh, members of the former Economic Council uh, had said that they offered ideas as to what could be done. But of course, some of those ideas weren't taken. And of course, you know that working with President Buhari then, uh, I mean, it was a very difficult thing because he, he had his own ideas. But with uh, this government, which is uh, private sector centered, yes. I think if we have a fresh idea as to how the economic management thing can function mm -hmm. alongside the uh, uh, Presidential Economic Coordination Council, and then, of course, with this uh, new innovation, the uh, emergency uh, uh, team, the EET, I think we could move forward from there. But of course, there are some ideas that also were brought in in the last administration that can't work. And that is if we are focus focusing too much on socialism, socialist interests, uh, then of course, there will be a problem. So, but. In as much as we have removed some of the incentives uh, uh, in terms of trying to drive a, a, a social-based society, a, a building a welfare state, nonetheless, we must understand that our economy can only grow if we allow the private sector to breathe. And of course, breathing this time around means pouring in a lot of liquidity. How can businesses access funds to be able to boost uh, their production, to be able to uh, boost access to Forex and all of that so that they can expand? Because we've seen businesses contracting in the last eight to nine months. So these are the challenges for the economic management team. And then of course, with this new tax given to it, uh, under the EET, we hope to see what emergency plans that the government can put in place in the next six months, as uh, Wale Edun has been asked to do through the EET. Yeah, somehow it looks like you've been reading more of the business and economic stories uh, these days than you're reading on political affairs. Thank you so much. Speaking more like a business journalist. <laughs>